Welcome back, everybody. We're here for another Designs for Zen. This time we're doing The Owl House, which is a fantastic Disney cartoon, which happens to have its season finale for season one tonight. And it's also available on Disney Online, but it's not on Disney Plus. So if you haven't seen The Owl House, find a way to watch it and enjoy. For today, we're going to do a staff yoga. So as you can see down here, have a safe space. I actually took down the pictures that I normally hang up because I don't want to hit them with my staff. So make sure you've got a safe place with no breakables and a little bit of extra room today. We're going to get started with Owl House Staff Yoga. And all you need really is a staff. If you don't have a staff, obviously you can use like a stick, a paper towel tube, a belt, any kind of long object. It doesn't have to be fixed, but I'm sure some of you have things like scythes, Mm, maybe a sword sheath, but don't use a sword, okay? I'm watching you guys. As always, for Riftwing Designs for Zen, we follow a path of yoga which is all about doing what works for you. We use the Bob Ross theme, where Bob Ross is an amazing painter, rest in peace, who always said there's nothing that you can do wrong. Whatever works for you is what's right for today, and that is exactly what we're going to do in today's yoga class. So as you find yourself a comfortable seat, first notice where you are. Just take note. You can sit cross-legged or you can sit with your feet out, whatever's comfortable. Just focus on your feelings. Maybe scan your body and see if there's any tightness. And then maybe focus now on your breathing. Just notice it. Is it in your chest? Is it in your belly? Is it shallow or deep? Is it hot? or cool. And now maybe begin to deepen your breaths if you'd like. You can put your hand on your belly to really focus on breathing from the diaphragm. So as you inhale, the diaphragm actually lowers and allows you to bring in more air. And as you exhale, it pushes in. So your belly, when you're doing diaphragm breathing, should expand on the inhale. And then contract on the exhale. It doesn't have to be like crazy belly dancing, but just notice. And maybe you roll those shoulders back and down. We'll focus on your posture here and really as you're breathing. Try to deepen those breaths, bringing more oxygen into your body. Now maybe start to bring your breath into an even so even inhales and even exhales. I'll do a count. If it works, follow along. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. And exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Four. Today we're going to do the box breath. If this is too much, you can just do your normal breathing. But the next time you inhale, hold it at the top. Two, three, four. Then exhale. Two, three, four. And we're going to hold it at the bottom. Two, three, four. Then inhale. Two, three, four. Hold it. Two, three, four. Exhale two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Continue on, whichever pattern works for you. Focusing on your breathing. And maybe making it longer or shorter if it feels good for you today. Two more cycles. And 
And as you finish at your own pace, come back to your breath in a normal breathing style. Good morning, let's get started. Today we are doing the Owl House Staff Yoga. So for those of you that have joined us, make sure you have ample space to swing your staff. And if you don't have a staff, any kind of long object, whether it's flexible or inflexible is fine, except pointy objects, none of those. To get started, contain, maintain your seat. You can have your eyes closed or just a gentle gaze. And I'm gonna go over today's theme before we get started. As you can see from my amazing cosplay, this is actually a closet cosplay. So all from home plus homemade, check my social media at Rift Wing Designs for details. We're going to be doing the Owl House Yoga and I'm dressed up as Luce Noceda. Luce is an eager Dominican American child who's a fantasy geek and outcast and was trying to find her place in the human world. But of course, this is a fantasy cartoon, so she accidentally stumbled upon a portal to a place called the Boiling Isles. And that's a dimension where magic and magical creatures are real, which is amazing for nerds like us, right? <laughs> so in order to prove herself as a witch, she begins to learn magic under Ida the Owl Lady. And Ida had a magic staff. Hers had an owl at the top, mine does not. Again, everybody's is different, which is kind of the cool thing. It's like Harry Potter where the wand chooses the wizard, you know. So these magical staffs are, they help the witches to focus their magic. And at the top in the show, they have these things called palismans, which are actually kind of magical creatures. And they're super, super cute. Uh, Ida, the owl ladies, is an actual wooden owl that comes to life called Albert. Very cute. A lot of this cartoon is cute. And so these palace mans are sentient creatures and each staff has power embedded into them and their palace man. But before witches can acquire one, they have to learn to cast spells and also learn how to handle a staff. So today we're going to be doing staff training to get the feel for how to use a staff through yoga today. Now this is brand new for me and I would love to hear if any of you guys have had experience with staff yoga before. I'm going to give one shout out right now to a it's an Instagram account called Steel Mace Yoga, like Steel Mace. Steel Mace Yoga posts with an actual like heavy steel mace to do like heavy lifting. We're just gonna use a normal staff, but they're pretty badass. So if you haven't already, definitely check out Steel Mace Yoga and remember that this is gonna be an experiment. So just as we mentioned at the beginning, what works for you may or may not be the same things I can do, and I'm probably gonna end up whacking something too, so <laughs> have fun today. So to begin, inhale, arms up, exhale, arms down. One more time, inhale, then draw them to heart center. If you'd like to set an intention for today's practice, you can do so. If not, I'm going to offer fun and relaxation. This is gonna be fun and hopefully we can relax either during or after. It's gonna be a wild time. So thank you again for joining me. Inhale, exhale, and then we're gonna inhale and have a deep exhale to steal your intention. Inhale, and let it go. All right, guys, inhale, arms up. Exhale to one side. We're gonna get our spine warmed up now. Inhale up, and exhale, other side. And we're gonna do this a couple times. At your own speed, if you want to stick when you're down and twist a little more, go ahead. We're going to be using your arms a lot today. Follow your breath. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And then back up one more time. All right. Now. As you come back to stillness, you can do on your knees cat cows, or today I'm going to do seated cat cows. Actually, it's cute because I got the little cat hoodie, right? So on your inhale, you're going to be reaching your chest out. Exhale, hunching over a little bit. Focus on moving through the sternum and a little bit with your tailbone, but really articulate the spine here. Inhale. Exhale, and you can move your head if you like. Guide it with your nose and only go as far as your neck wants to go. Good. And 
after this, maybe start to do some circles. In yoga, again, you do both directions, so one way and then the other. Just finding any movement that your body needs. And we're going to do some shoulder rolls. Can't forget them today, right? I like to do four points, so forward, up, back, and down. Remembering to really move those shoulder blades. It's something we often tend to not do, so. There we go. <sighs> And then the other direction, so back, up, forward, and down. Good. You ready to go, guys? This is gonna be crazy. All right, to start off with, you can do this seated or standing. Take your staff with both hands. It's gonna be a little wider than hip distance apart and just start lifting it above your head. Down to the floor, or if you're standing down to your hips, Exhaling as you go down, inhale as you go up. This is where if you have that steel mace, the extra weight's really going to work those shoulders. And again, because this is big on shoulders and arms, if you feel any pain, back off, modify, or just do it with your hands and no staff. Even though your pelvis man is going to be alive, it is not yet, so it won't be offended. Next time you go up, maybe try moving your arms a little more. You may have to adjust your grip. So... If your shoulders are super healthy, you can actually go like this. I know this is crazy. Again, you do not have to compete with me, but I'm actually keeping a loose grip on my staff. This is called flossing. So you're actually articulating the whole, the whole way with your shoulder blades. And some days it works and some days it doesn't. This is where if you have a belt or a strap, because it's more flexible than a staff, it may work better for you. But look at how wide my my hands are here. This is a very, very wide grip in order to do the shoulder flossing. Again, breathing. Don't forget to breathe. These are tough. But in order to be a witch, you have to work hard, right? Whew, okay, let's put it down. Whew, maybe you got to do some more shoulder rolls now. That was intense, right? How about like this? Hands out, interlace. Do one of these. Just, again, feel your body out here. There's no right or wrong. It's really just like my shoulders are already feeling it. <laughs> so we're going to come to standing now. Tadasana or mountain pose. Oops. There we go. I want to be able to see you guys. There you go. Okay. Taking your staff in your hands. <sighs> Mountain pose is all about breathing. Shoulders back and down. Then take your staff, hold it upright, switch to the other side. So you're doing like a little twisting, but you're taking your arms halfway. Oh, maybe try doing that. Kind of like you're paddling a boat. So what we're gonna do later on is we're gonna do it from the side. If you want to start now, you can actually rotate your torso, keep your feet still. And again, this is where make sure you've got enough space. Try doing it to the side. And if you want, you can be fancy and do a twirl. And then the other way. So you see how it's starting to get weird already? Twirl, then keeping your feet planted, torso twist. So now you're twisting that spine that we just warmed up, going both ways. And then again, if you want to be fancy and do a twirl, you can do some twirls. It's already cool, isn't it? All right, so come back to center. Plant your staff, hands to center, but you're going to do like a little prayer. <sighs> Breathing here. Take your staff in both hands. Palms are facing down, holding the staff in front of you. Raise it above your head. We're going to do like a goal post with your arm and then lower it behind your head. So it's like one of those bench presses behind your head. Again, only going to where it feels good for you. If there's any pain, you can always do it in front of your chest. 
doing it in the back really articulates the shoulders. So feel how that feels. And now take it back forward, hold it in front of you, and we're going to go into chair pose. So in chair pose, your feet are hip distance apart, you're squatting here. Up, squat, it's going to burn in your arms holding that staff outright. If you can't do it, that's okay. You can put it down or you can maybe hold it again in the center. Being careful not to hit the ground. Once you've got a couple squats in, we're gonna freeze when you're down. Okay. Breathing here. Now, come back up to Tadasana Mountain, take a break. We're gonna add to it. <laughs> this is gonna be for your wrists. So maybe first put down your staff. Let's do some wrist warm ups together. First off, stick your hand out and just flex your wrist. Breathing. If you want, you could even press it against something solid. Again, no pain. And then other side. Good. And then take your wrists out and do wrist rolls. And maybe interlace your fingers and do some woobly wooblies. Then wobble the other way. I've done this before, guys. It's pretty tricky. And maybe just a couple of warm-up shakes it out. There you go. Ready? Here we go. Coming back to your Tadasana staff standing pose. Let's do it standing before we do it in chair. <laughs> so you're going to take your staff and again, the weight, the, the further you hold it in the back of your staff, the heavier it's going to be. So I'm going to start here and try not to smack myself in the face. You're going to lift it up and then rotate. So you can do this, or if you want, you can lift it up, rotate. Let's see if I can do this here. Ooh, it gets so heavy, and I don't have enough room. So feel how it feels to really get that, oof, beefy. <laughs> it's so heavy. And try it on the other side, too. Let that wrist shake it out. Okay, hold it up, rotate. And you can even try straightening. It's what works for you here. And then hold it out. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Crazy, right? What I'm thinking about doing is a series on props. So we do things like with a strap, with blocks. So I'm interested in your feedback if you like this. Put your staff down. We're going to. Let those wrists go again. One we can do now is take your hands like this, palms backwards, and if you pull it into your chest and lower your elbows, you'll get a good wrist stretch. This is actually pretty good for carpal tunnel too. I mean, see your doctor if you have these issues, but <laughs> ah, breathing. All right, now we're gonna try doing it in chair. Here we go, squatting down, hold your staff, and then move to one side. Trying to keep the squat, come to center, switch. <laughs> okay, so you're like this. I don't have enough space. And whenever you need a break, take a break. <laughs> Whew. Good job, you guys. Now we're going to go back to our mountain. I have my staff is down. Inhale up. Exhale. We're going to do forward fold all the way down. Okay. Forward fold. Just hang here. Let your neck go. Maybe invite a gentle bend into your knees. Your hands can be on the ground. They can hold each other. Just get into that forward fold. Let it go. Remembering to breathe. I'm gonna go this way so you can see it a little better. So the staff should be in front of you here. And then as it's on the ground, or you can just touch the ground, you put one hand down now, or actually both hands down. <laughs> and I'm not actually gonna hold my staff because it's a little bit of a prop. So put your hands down and then as you're bent, try to kick one leg out. 
Your, now notice my knee is bent, right? Your back heel should be flexed and then plant it. Kick back and plant it and do that a couple times. So it's kind of like what we used to do in all fours, except we're standing here. And then if you want, you can try to take your staff with one hand and put the opposite leg back and reach forward. Cool, huh? And then down. And you gotta do the little swirl to get it onto the other side. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, swirl. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Just have fun with it. Do a few more at your own pace. Maybe you find something else to do. Maybe you take in a couple more lifts because facing down can make you a little dizzy. <sighs> okay. From your forward fold, let go of the staff again. Now we're going to do some lunges. So plant those hands down. Step one leg all the way back. We're going to go in a lizard lunge. So with this, the back heel is up. Front knee is down, so you should be able to hold yourself up. If you need to put the back knee down, do that. Okay? Just feel how this feels. Breathing here. Now, take the staff with the hand that's the same as your leg that's back, and then you're going to raise it up. Lower. And raise it up. Okay? <laughs> it gets pretty wobbly. Then you can switch hands using the swirl, plant your hand, and go into a twist and hold. Lower down. Circle it around. Lift here. One more time. Lower down. Circle it around. And twist. Breathe here. Shoulder blades back, belly in. And exhale, put it down, lower that knee. We're gonna go into child's pose. So we're starting on all fours, widen your legs, and a well-deserved rest, you guys. Good job. Because we're working our shoulders here, let's do some thread the needle. So from child's pose, come up to all fours. Inhale, raise one arm up. Exhale, hug your chest. Inhale up. Exhale, under and hug. This time up. And then take it through. And if you want, you can lower down. Really getting a good twist here. And I like to either take your hand forward or put it behind you. Breathing. And then inhale back to all fours. Lift up that hand, unthread it all the way back. Plant it down. Make sure you're nice and centered. Then the other side up. Scoop it through, hug. Up. And hug. And this time we're going all the way, so inhale up. Exhale through. Lowering to your shoulder. Maybe placing your other hand out or behind. And breathe. Again, no pain. If you need to modify, go ahead. And then slowly unwind. Now we got to do the other side, guys. So if you need any movements, go ahead. Then you're going to take your staff. Uh, you can actually put it on the opposite side of the foot that's stepping forward. So the other foot's going forward. And then you're going to wiggle back into your lizard lunge. So I've got my right foot back. The staff is on the right side. Lift up here. Use your core and just feel how it feels here. Maybe you need to widen it or shorten it. That's fine. Maybe you need your knee down. That's fine. From here, grab your staff. Lifting. Okay, do a couple of those. And I like to have my hand on the ground here for a little extra twist. But on your knee is fine. Then take it forward, spin it around. Oops. 
<laughs> and then other side, planting your hand, twisting and opening here. All right, guys. Two more breaths. Good job. Lower, forward, twisting to the other side, and planting and lifting. Down, spin, one more side twist. You got this. Lift, shoulder blades back and down, belly in, looking up and breathing. Good job, guys. Plant that staff, and then lower to your knee. And this time, if you want to do an actual flow, you can. So I'm just going to go into one quick knees, chest, chin, into cobra by lifting up, keeping your feet down and lifting your hands. And just push back into child's pose. If you need to get a drink. All right. This is so fun. I was going to do some with low lunges, but I think you guys have had enough here. <laughs> so let's go into gait. So come up onto your knees here. My staff is in front of me. Actually, I can lower it a little so you guys can see it here. There we go. <laughs> I wasn't lying. All right, so you're on your knees. Maybe if you need some padding on your knees, do that, okay? Inhale, arms up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Hands to center. <sighs> Breathing. Now, take, I'm using my right leg and reaching out. It can be your left, whatever works. So you bent knee straight and the outside edge of your foot is trying to reach down. <sighs> then take your staff and reach the same direction as your feet. Look how badass this is, guys. This is gate pose. Shoulders back. Pushing on the outside of your extended foot and with the back, the top of your foot. Then we're going to go and reach backwards. You might have to change your grip and then try and do an opening in the other direction. So I've planted the staff and I'm just holding it and doing a little back bend. This is actually really fun. Breathe. Slowly come back up. One more time. It's kind of like Mulan too, right? The staff training. I love it. And then backwards. Check that cool swirl out. Again, notice I'm doing different movements. You just do what works for you. You want to make it look awesome? Make it look awesome. You're tired? Don't do it. All right. Plant it down. Switching sides. Okay. Outer edge out. Hands down. And if you need to, you can put your staff down here. Just feel where you're at. And if you like holding it for some extra support, you got it, guys. All right. Staff up. Extending. Towards the extended foot. Looking over your shoulder here. Belly in, shoulders down. And breathe. Fierce. Then, inhale and just... Twist your body. You want to keep it parallel, so you're just bending along the plane here. And if you want, you can go deep. And if it feels weird, you don't have to. Hands can be wide or far apart. Have fun, guys. And then use your abs to lift yourself up. Oh, hey, look it. It went the other way. Okay. Strong. And then opposite direction. Ooh, swirl, swirl. Oh my god, this is so cool. There we go. Again, you do not have to compete with me. I can't see you. Okay, back up. Ooh, lift, 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 lift. Lower that staff down. Draw your leg back in. And let's flop over and stick our feet out here. Just wiggle them out. Maybe do some stretches here. All right, we're going to do two more standing poses, and then we're going to cool down, because this is definitely building some sweat for me. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> okay, now I might turn a little bit to show you different angles, but what you're going to do is we're going to get up back into standing into mountain pose. <sighs> OK. 
Okay, so at the top of your mat, we're gonna do warrior one and then warrior two. So warrior one, you step one foot back. And normally you'll raise both hands up like this, but this time you're gonna hold your staff. So you're doing warrior one legs with staff overhead. And if you want, you can do some dips here. Lowering it behind your head, only to where your shoulder blades wanna go. Front knee should be bent, not past your toes. Back heel should be at an angle, 45 degrees. Okay, good. If you want here, you can try to tilt from side to side. Maybe you've had too much side tilting already. Okay. And then take it in front, press it out, and do four of those. Breathing. Keep those knees bent. Good. Now we're gonna to transition to warrior two. So the front knee, take that same hand, hold the staff and open up. Okay, back foot, you can readjust. Knee is bent. Look towards that reach, outreached hand. Shoulders back and down. Good, hold it here, stay strong. All right, now both hands reach forward. So you're twisting your hips, but keeping your feet still. This might be too much, and if it is, adjust. Take your staff all the way around. And it might feel a little weird in the back. It's supposed to, this is a reverse twist. Okay. Then take the staff just like we did before. So the same arm with the knee out. Try to do both hands reaching out here. Now we're gonna go into our reverse warrior, ready? So you're going to reach back with your staff. And again, normally what you'll do is you'll be reaching back like this. If it feels better just to do a normal reverse warrior, do that. But move the staff where your arms wanna go. You should be doing a little back bend here. Then come forward and fold all the way, lowering the staff to the ground. And you're gonna be kind of leaning on your front knee. Like this. Okay, it's an extended angle. If you want, you could just do a normal extended angle. If you wanna be crazy, maybe try doing an extended angle with your staff here and use it as an extension of your arms. Or maybe you hold it with the bottom one or maybe you do one of these. This is actually pretty cool. Don't collapse here, hold yourself up and then push up. Okay, wide angle. <laughs> I need a bigger room. Wide angle, so your legs are wide. Holding a staff with both hands, forward fold. Whew. Keep your knees maybe a little bit bent here. Maybe you rock from side to side. And then you're gonna lift your staff all the way up and above. And then holding it above, bend those knees into a goddess squat, lowering your arms behind your head too. If you want, you can hold it here, or you can do a set of standing and then lowering. I'm just gonna hold. Feet are strong, knees are strong, breathing. All right, then we're gonna do some punches and then we're gonna do the other side and then we're gonna cool down, I promise. Ready? Take it forward. If you were moving, come to stillness and you're gonna take it and lift it up. Knees are still bent, twirl. Other side, punch up, twirl. Hold those feet, punch up, twirl. One more time if you can. You got this, guys. I love the sound effects. Okay, lifting up. Shake those feet out. Good job, guys. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Okay, so now we got to do the other side. So come to center. Step back your other leg into warrior one. Front leg and knee are facing forward, back foot 45 degree angle, heel down, raising staff above your head. Maybe you lower it behind your head, maybe you do something different on this side. Breathing. Okay, just play around with it. Maybe you do some cool swirls or maybe you just stand on that staff and breathe. Oof. Okay. Taking the staff in front, same hand as your knee that's going forward. Inhale, 
and open into warrior two, other direction. I'm actually gonna turn around here so you're not looking at my butt. I know it's cool, but I'm just gonna go over this way. <laughs> so front knee's bent, foot is at an angle. It can be wider or it can be further in. <laughs> Extending out. <sighs> Breathing here. And now option to try a different pose with the staff. Maybe you try holding it out. Going backwards. This way is actually easier for me to twist the other direction. Learn how your body feels. Okay, now we're gonna do reverse warrior. So same hand as your knees that extended. Going backwards. Find what works for you. Just a small back bend. Keep your hips facing forward. Breathing here. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no that, that doesn't work in my body. <laughs> Have fun with it, guys. Okay, from your reverse warrior, bring it back up to warrior. Keep that front knee bent. Then spin it forward, do another wide leg forward fold. We did it. We did it, guys. Bend those front legs. <laughs> front legs. <laughs> the only two legs you have. Bend the knees. And now maybe... Grab your staff. We'll do a couple quick side squats. Again, looking really badass here. If it works for you, you can do the swirls or you can not do the swirls. You can just do like a jive back and forth like you're tap dancing, right? Do what works for you. Oh my gosh. Okay, back to center. If you want, you can do a flow here. Or just find your way to the ground. I'm going to go through a squat. Holding it out in front of me. Slowly, slowly, slowly lower down. Keep your tailbone tucked. Hold that staff strong in front of you. Keep going. And when you get to your yogi squats, your, your heels should be down. But if you have to lift them, lift them. Okay. I'm just going to hold the staff in front of me for a second. Still holding myself up. Obviously heavy breathing. And then find the way to your bottom. <sighs> Staff can go. On the floor next to you, we're gonna go into actual staff pose. How cool is this? Feet are in front of you, heels down, toes lifted. So you've got like a 90 degree angle there. Back straight, arms, palms down in front of you. They can be facing forward or back. I like facing back, but forward is more traditional. <sighs> Your knees should not be locked, but you can try to draw the kneecaps up if you want a little more stretch here. Oh, good job, guys. We did it. Now we're going to do Marici's pose. Marici is the name of a stage. You take your one leg in. You do not cross it. Just pull it as close to your bottom as you can. So it's like this. Then you twist over it. Okay, so you can have your hand up or down. Inhale to lengthen and straighten and exhale maybe to deepen your twist. Good job, guys. All right, on twist, straighten back. Two breaths here. If you'd like, you can do a little forward fold, keeping the spine straight. Then straighten back up into staff pose. Draw the other leg in. Do not cross it. Pull it in tight. And then twist the other way. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhale to deepen the twist. All right, on twist. This time you're welcome to do a forward fold with a back bending. And you can bend your knees. Do whatever works for you. You can grab your toes so you don't have to. You can grab your legs. Whatever feels good.
and straighten back up. Staff pose, breathe here. Okay, good job guys. And we've actually got a ton of time left. So take your feet in to butterfly with their staff in front of you. So your feet are together here. They can be further out for a more relaxed stretch or you can pull them in to deepen the stretch. It's really gonna stretch along your groin, so be careful. If you want, again, you can put blocks under your knees to give you some support. And you just fold over again with a straight spine and leaning into your feet here. If you'd like and you want to be lazy, you can actually just lower down into a reclined butterfly. So for that, safely and gently, just lower down. Actually, that feels amazing. Why did I say this is an option? <laughs> you all should oh, just flop onto your backs with butterfly feet. If you'd like here, because we did work our shoulders, make a diamond with your arms as well and place that over your head and feel how, how much your shoulders appreciated that workout. You can close your eyes here. And notice your spine. If there's too much of a stretch in your lower back, you have the option to take your feet and just put your your knees in the air and your feet down. That'll lessen the stretch in your lower back. Or you can take your knees to chest, but we'll do that next. So again, find what works for you here. There's no wrong way to do this, guys. We're going to spend one more minute here. So if you want to switch your arms, you can do goal posts with your arms or maybe T pose in Maybe, maybe you want to take your staff one more time and hold it above your head. So the weight of the staff is actually pressing into your palms here to give you some grounding. And again, your legs can be wherever works for you. Breathing here. Now, if you have the staff in your hands above your head, if you want to do some sit-ups, have at it, right? <laughs> so you can do a couple of, like, bench press sit-ups. You really don't have to. You can just watch me. It's fine. <laughs> uh, all right. Next, we're going to do um, deer, and then we're going to do legs up the wall to give you guys. So if you were with me last week for one of the Agretzico yogas, we did deer. So if your feet, if you're seated and you're still in butterfly, you win because that's where we're going back to. So everybody find your way back to seated butterfly. Okay. Feet are together, knees out, sitting up. Then to get into deer, you kind of shift to one side and kick one foot out. So you're making like a pinwheel. For me, both of my feet are facing right. And then you sit up straight and you actually want to have weight on both of your sits bones. So maybe your feet have to bend here or maybe you have to straighten one leg. But the traditional deer poses with both knees bent, balanced on your sit bones, facing forward, shoulders back. But you can modify. Maybe you hold your staff in front of you to keep you sitting straight. If you want, you can hold it above your head or behind your head. Maybe a little bit more stretch or maybe you do some flossing. Hey, look at me. Okay. Actually holding it behind, it gives me a little back bend, which feels nice. Wherever you are, we're going to go to the other side. So there's a cool way of doing this. I'm going to attempt it. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I think it is you go over the same side as your feet and then you push into your feet and do a whole twist and then you land on the other side. Okay, that wasn't perfect, but it's like a little break dancing thing. So if you're good at that, maybe you got there. If you didn't get here, <laughs> go back into butterfly. And then you're taking it for me, it's the left leg, leaning over and making that pinwheel facing left. Cool, right? Now make sure you're on both sits bones. For me, this is actually more difficult on this side, so I'm going to straighten this leg. I have a, a bum left knee. 
And again, here you can use your staff in any way that you feel. This looks so cool too. <laughs> any way that you feel will help you to get your final stretch. Okay? Just have fun with it. Cooling down. All right, so now we're going to go into our final cool down. So if you want to get a blanket, I know I definitely am not that cool yet, but sometimes you really cool down. Uh, get a drink of water now before we start to get into our little nap time poses. In yoga, what I call nap time is actually the final cool down where your body absorbs the benefits of your practice. So the first one we're going to do is legs up the wall. If you need to do anything else like a leg twists a uh, mini back bend do that now i'll give you just a minute i'm going to do those leg twists so your knees to chest you can just stay here and hug yourself and then i'm just gonna twist it out because my spine likes to crack Couple more seconds to let you guys do what you need to. And then you may want to have your staff for legs up the wall. I'll tell you there's some bonus poses. Nothing again is mandatory. So for that you need a wall or you can use a chair and put your legs on the chair, sofa, anything that's higher than you or if you want to and you have it in your practice you can just do a normal um, where you're laying on the ground and you lift your legs up but do what works for you. So I'm going to do legs up the wall. So you scooch up to the wall, so you're side to side with it, and then you just rotate. <laughs> and you make your way awkwardly to have your legs on the wall. That's hence the name of the pose. Get it? <laughs> now for this, um, you, want, you can do so many different things. You can keep your neck, knees bent. You can keep your feet flat. You can take your arms out. You can put them above your head. You can even put a blanket underneath you if you want a little extra cushioning or to lift your hips a little bit here. And of course, I have <laughs> my microphone pack, so that's a little uncomfortable for me. So if you want to just stay here, we're going to be doing this for about three to four minutes. There's other options if you want to put your staff into your practice. The first one is legs up the wall holding staff. So you put the staff in the wall and then you take your feet and you do like a little piece, piece feet. This is going to give you that more of that hip opening. It looks really weird. <laughs> okay, you can do that. You can stay there. You can do a this might hurt if it falls in your face, so be careful. You can try to hold it with your feet. And like that. Okay, this is really weird. It may or may not work. <laughs> but it is fun. Okay. Uh, you can bend your feet and just put it on like a pancake. This also feels weird. Or you can hold it with your hands again if you want that weight on your palms. Again, do what works for you. And I'll give you a few minutes to breathe here. And I'll call you out. So relax and absorb the benefits. If any thoughts linger in your mind, acknowledge them and let them move on. Focus on your breathing. And if you have music, you can focus on that as well.
We'll spend a few more breaths here. If this feels really good to you, you can stay here for the rest of today's practice. And if you're gonna follow me, you can start to find your way back down. Oh, my legs are shaking. <laughs> kind of maybe curl over to one side as you find your way down. So we're gonna go into your final resting pose here. So again, you don't need your staff anymore. You can put it to the side to thank it for its good practice. Lower down onto your back. Again, maybe you cover your core with a blanket because we worked super hard, guys. For Savasana, final resting pose, your feet can be outstretched, kind of like just at the edges of your mats here, and your arms can be outstretched as well. If a different pose feels good, feel free. Palms can be up to absorb energy, or you can put your palms down to ground. Make yourself comfortable. Maybe you lower the lights. And as you go into your final Savasana resting, I will call you out in a few minutes. So take any other movements you need. And I'll see you on the other side. Staying where you are. Begin to deepen your breathing. Maybe inviting gentle movement into your fingers and toes. Roll your wrists and ankles. And maybe invite a big full body stretch as you begin 
to wake up from Savasana. Draw your legs in, maybe give yourself one more big hug. And then you're gonna roll over to one side and remain there in a fetal pose. Just cozy, maybe resting your head on one arm. As I read you one last passage before we complete today's yoga. In the episode, A Lying Witch and a Warden, Luce said, if you have a different way of doing things, a different way of seeing things, that might make you weird, but it also makes you awesome. Don't you see? Just as today's yoga was different, you are different too. In Witches Before Wizards, Eda the Owl Lady said, if we all waited around for a prophecy to make us special, we die waiting. And that's why you need to choose yourself. Choose yourself. Know that this training has made you stronger. Keep going. You are worth it. And you have to be yourself, just like Luce, in order to find your place in the world. Taking a deep, deep breath in, start to find your way back up to a seated position. Maybe you bring your staff in front of you too to thank it for helping you to train today. If you're in your cross leg and seat, you can invite a gentle gaze. Take your hands, inhale them above your head, and draw them down. Inhale again, and exhale, and take your staff and maybe hold it in front of you as you do prayer pose here. Deep inhale and exhale, and bring back the intention that you started with today. Maybe fun and relaxation. And remind yourself to hold that, or perhaps make a new intention for the rest of your day to come. We're going to seal it with two more breaths, one small and then a big one to let it out. So inhale, exhale, and then a big one. Ready? Inhale, and let it go. I thank you for practicing our staff yoga today, and I wish you the best in practices to come. I value and thanks and namaste. Thank you all for joining me today. Please give me feedback. I'd love to hear what you think, especially as we think about maybe doing some more props for yoga in the future. As always, follow me on Roshun Designs, and I can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>